Okay, and on today's episode of True Technology Meets, we're joined by Matt Wakaitis from MPL Advanced Media. Hi, Matt. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Now, just to explain to the viewers, NPL Advanced Media, what does that encompass? It encompasses a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> so get comfy. Get comfy, yes. get yourself a drink, and make sure you've been to the bathroom. So we built, um, we built a brand new company that is a technology and media startup that basically works in the paintball world. Right. Uh, so the National Paintball League is our uh, league and pretty much a means to an end, right? It's a film set. Okay. Essentially. Okay. The advanced media side is all of our technology that we're building out to support that league and to support leagues around the world. Right. Um, so this past weekend, we rolled out um, Stream PB, which is a essentially a paintball Netflix kind of deal. Yeah. Um, we are also simulcasting leagues from around the world. Um, last weekend, we were simulcasting Super 7s out of Australia. We okay. put on an incredible webcast. Um, and we were able to augment their webcasts, clip out matches, um, and get them to their Facebook page. This coming weekend, we're actually going to be simulcasting the Legend series out of Columbia. Oh, wow. um, and we're extending that reach farther and farther. Right. Um, we're also working on a couple other apps, excuse me, a couple other apps internally. Um, I think we're going to be releasing some of those before um, NXL Vegas. So okay. we do have a um, we do have a new tech product called Fan PB, which is not quite ready yet, but it will be in probably next week or so. Okay. Um, so that's going to be um, integrated chat, um, fantasy pick them. Um, basically, as the NXL event rolls on, um, we can allow fans from around the world to chat with one another, make predictions, um, oh, kind of nice. see. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of technology products that's getting released, um, especially now as the season's getting started, you're going to see a lot more of the advanced media side of right. the NPL. Okay. So really this is, um, I guess a bridge between the, the remote viewer and the yes. live action. That's right. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's backtrack a little bit. What is your, well, let's backtrack a lot, potentially. What's your, <laughs> um, what's your initial involvement with paintball? You know, when did you, when did you start playing? What's your background in the sport? I got started in the early 2000s. Right. Um, I, there was a, there was a field called uh, Hypersun Paintball, which was, um, across the street from uh, uh, an ice cream place, actually. That so, sounds like a great location already. I mean... Oh, oh my goodness, it was, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Um, a lot of traffic going by. There was always people. And actually, that's how I discovered it. Because um, I was out getting... It? You discovered it because you were at the ice cream place? Yeah. Or... I like yep. it. Yep. Because, uh, you know, you heard noises in. coming across the street. There we and go. It looks and, you know, oh. people would come over to get uh, food and ice cream, nice. like, fully dressed up and, like, the oh, really? old tournament stuff. Yeah, because it was just across the street. Cool. So people were coming across, like, with dye. Um, I have uh, the pants that I still have are the C4 line. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. From a long time ago. Um, Way back <laughs> They still wear them. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but that's how I got my start. You know, okay. I found something that. It looked really fun. I watched a couple times. Right. Um, tried to convince my mom to let me do it. She was not having it. Um, my dad, though, um, oh, he was, was a person who was like, this looks fun. Yeah. <laughs> now, I imagine, like, there must be some kind of rationale between people viewing a sport and people viewing a sport whilst eating ice cream. I imagine <laughs> the latter translates to far more people trying that sport oh yeah that's great um you know because they had a they had the um uh hyperball field in the back right um oh man you had one of those across the street yep. from an ice cream yep. parlor yep 
That's yeah, that's great. They may as well have called it Willy Wonka's. That's great. Yeah, they had a high football field and then oh. they had a um, castle field. Wow. So, so, so you had like that was like open door to Entertainment Central. Oh yeah, with guns. Yep. It was uh, that was not the first place I played though. Okay. Um, because my mom had found a Spider Compact two in one that was being sold on. Uh, the classified section in newspaper. Okay. Uh, so I bought that. Um, Back in the old and, days when things were advertised in newspapers. Yep. Yep. And uh, we ended up going to a another field that was an outdoor field. Right. Um, far, it was a woods field, far more uh, expansive. Okay. And uh, that was, I went with a friend of mine and that I would not say was a good experience. <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for another webcast. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that sounds interesting. So we were, we were the we were the young kids, and uh, people had ramping guns. Okay, so okay, we, we got beat up pretty bad, and my friend actually never played again. Oh wow, wow! I mean, that's always the risk, right? When when newcomers to the sport are exposed in an inappropriate scenario, let's say. So mm-hmm. so you you presumably played at a recreational level for a little while or did you go, did you develop into tournament play? I developed into tournament play almost immediately. Nice. Um, yeah. And then, uh, I was a referee at the field for okay. two years. Um, Oh, that's insightful. Yeah. So, yeah. Working, working for store credit. Yes. <laughs> like, yep, like work for paint. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and wow. then life got in the way. Yep. Yeah, we all kind of, uh, they try and force us to grow up. I'm still trying to resist. So <laughs> so fast forward from then till now, what, you know, as you rightly state, life does get in the way for a lot of players. What dragged you back in? Because, you know, two years ago, the MPL wasn't a household name. You know, 12 months ago, it wasn't a household name. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey. I, I still don't believe it, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> still pinching yourself? Yeah, it's still very weird for me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, how did uh, it, how did, what, talk us through, you know, the kind of, the dynamics. Was it like uh, yeah. you had a 12-month run-up to that point? Or was it like, you know, 10 days of, you know what, let's do this? So I actually got back into the sport, um because I, I moved upstate New York from New York City okay. um, temporarily before I moved to, uh, I relocate every couple of years. So um, I- just, just for fun? Like moving uh, isn't enjoyable? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, trying to find, you know, experiencing things. You know, so it's uh, just like, I wonder what witness relocation is like. I know, I'm going to huh? move every couple of years. Yeah. Toronto, New York out. City, Los <laughs> Angeles, now Denver. <laughs> okay. Anywhere planned for the next two years? Oh, I like Denver. Okay. So far. So nice. San Diego is the only other city on the list, but I'm not sure if I want to. Part of me is insanely jealous that you have the ability to relocate that frequently. It has pluses and minuses. Yeah. I get everything else. Yeah. But, um. Okay. So back back to. I got back into this thing because I never stopped thinking about the sport. Right. Um, you know, I'd be, uh, cause that was back in the day where you needed to, um, actually like pull the trigger. <laughs> so, yes. you know, it was always, yes. uh, practicing like the, the what? trigger, the trigger pull. It was just something that I would do if, uh, you know, I was stressed out or whatever. Um, I actually introduced a couple friends from college to it. Um, it's I, weird, because I played a couple times. The, the whole yeah. trigger pull thing is that, so I just got a, um, a free flow autococker this past weekend oh, and nice. used it, used it for the first time. And the whole art of pulling the trigger is just so alien to so many players and everybody mm-hmm. wants to shoot it. But inside a part of me dies and you just think you're not going to be able to pull that correctly yeah. because you've never done it. And it's, yeah. it's tough. It's I really never had an autococker. I always wanted one. I did have an angel, though, which I regret selling. A lot of people have recently shared that sentiment, actually. 
So, Angel Speed 04. Oh, look at that. See, I love it when people recall this, you know, I love that gun type of thing. And they have that emotional link and, you know, the memories that come hand in hand with that. Mm -hmm. That's great. So back into paintball. Yes. How do you get from back into paintball to, hey, you know what, let's do this? Um, It was uh, largely, I think it was because of BKI. Okay. Um, so this cool. is before, this is when Grayson and Scott were running BKI. Right. Okay. Um, so original I, BKI days. Yeah. I had come across the website. Yeah. Uh, Cause I was trying to get okay at paintball again. Okay. Um, and basically I reached out to Grayson and said, Hey, I can, I can help you make tweaks to your website. Right. Uh, and, you know, as I started to get to know those guys, I started asking them about the state of the industry and the state of the webcast and the state of paintball media. Um, right. And because that was my first objective is okay. to try and fix the media side. Um, and obviously that it's easy to come up with a plan. It's very hard to execute said plan. Sure. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that needs to be adjusted in this sport far beyond doing a different webcast. Far um, beyond physical entities. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. Like Split Deck, for yeah. instance. Right. That does us no favors with storytelling. Right. From a media there, perspective. Yeah. Yeah. There's a good reason it's there. Oh, sure. It's all logistics. Sure. Um, you know, but for an audience. Yeah. It's I mean, tough. it's. It's the same as going to a pantomime and watching, you know, five minutes of Cinderella and then mm -hmm. two minutes of Sleeping Beauty and then a minute of Cinderella again. Yeah. Super 7s is a non-split deck and it's a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Super 7s is, I think it's is one of those, one of those webcasts that churns. It's just non-stop action. I oh, think yeah. they have, they have colorful commentary. I think mm -hmm. the Australian mentality helps a lot because they'll call you out. If you're, yeah. if you're a dork, you get called a dork, which I like, um, you know, and then, then they'll have a beer later. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I think it's also brutal because it's 15 BPS. It is. And, you know, you see people chopped up. Um, yeah. And it's great. It's great yeah. that we can watch it from the comfort of our, you know, house with the beer oh, it's fantastic absolutely yeah they do a good they do a good job you do a great job yeah they do a great job so yeah um so presumably you you worked with with mike with adam and with mm -hmm. john did you yep yeah That's adam right. Connolly is the man when it comes to yeah. churning out that webcast they it's it's great you know and um for us you know we were able to um clip out all the matches so they have and that uh, 50 was, new assets on their Facebook page. It's mutually beneficial. That was huge because I noticed over the weekend players would share that, you know, mm -hmm. players who were at the event would share, you know, hey, check me out, check my team out in this match, etc. And mm -hmm. almost to a point, the Super 7s didn't have to do that because they were busy running the event, which was mm -hmm. equally as cool. Yeah. Uh, and we were able to, the, the thing that excited me most, um, you know, we were able to pull highlights yes. and simulcast those highlights to social media, including Instagram, when those players were still on the field. Yes. That's, uh, I, I mean, that's crazy efficient. <laughs> Does that, it, it kind of blows my mind of how you get a picture from there to here. And I, I appreciate there's all the technology behind it. I just kind of lie down and roll over that I'm never going to really understand at all. I should just embrace it. And I'm fine with that. Now, it, in its simplest form, this was all done via Facebook or this was done via Stream PB? This was done via Stream PB. Right. Um, so. But then you then shared to... back onto Facebook? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got it. Um, you know, because we have we have some uh, partnerships with online video providers, right? Because um, ultimately, Stream PB is a subscription product. Sure. Um, we're going to have as much free content on there as possible. Okay. But um, you know, recently we've been trying to push subscribers um, yep. because it's extraordinarily expensive for us to run that platform. 
Right. Um, I mean, not if we include the technology costs alone, like of developing an app that is of that caliber. Yes. um, That's a six figure investment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it's, there's this, this very nervous preemptive period where you know, the investment is warranted from the end product, but the, the take up rate isn't there on day one, which is, you know, natural. Yeah. Um, but you know, and we were still pushing updates as that event was going on. Sure. Um, integrated chat was sent up, uh, right before semifinals. Right. Um, so like that was an update that I had pushed, uh, into production. Wow. Like, and you know, this is something and people were using it. Yeah. You know, um, because this is something that some of the other providers out there don't have. Sure. And there are much more mature products. Sure. Um, so like we're putting the money in, uh, we're building product out, but ultimately in order for us to keep doing what we're doing, we need people to subscribe. Got it. Um, Got you know, it. and that, uh, we have a found, we have an early bird membership for $55 for the year, okay. um, because content's always coming on. Um, and that early bird thing will probably be ending by then. I was, um, I was an early we, bird, uh, for the record. You so, were. You I, were. I, I, I early birded because I know the difference that that initial support makes. So, it does. It makes an incredible difference. Yeah, um, and, and not just financially, right? It's actually kind of, it affects the morale of the people working yeah. on the project. And it, you know, it validifies, hey, this is a worthwhile pursuit. Yeah. So so things happen off the back of that. Um, I oh, mean, I experienced sure. the same with the patreon so yeah. well you're at you're at above 200 now aren't you two patrons 260 I'm wow 260 I'm that's gonna, so exciting it, it is but it's you know in much the same way there's you know there's this huge phase and it could be it could be a year it could be a month nobody knows right where yeah. you're still in the is this gonna work um so yeah it is exciting. Yeah. It's really exciting, but it's motivating. It's motivating to it do it right. It's motivating, and I'm sure you guys share this, it's motivating to actually learn how can I reach the people that I need to reach. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and that's one of the, the big challenges that I face and I think you guys face as well, right? Yeah. We have a, there's a percentage of the, the market, let's say, that is very active on social media that's aware mm-hmm. of everything that happens, etc. But in terms of the paintball playing population, they're minuscule. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we gotta we gotta cross that bridge. But not only have we got to cross that bridge, we've got to build other bridges and bigger yeah. bridges and wider bridges and longer bridges. So yeah, it's um it's a good challenge to be on. It is, you know, and like for us, um because, uh, you know, when, when you asked me what, what, how would I like to be introduced? And I said, well, we're basic. Our, our parent company is NPL Advanced Media. Um, and that was done for a very specific reason. Right. Um, so basically, you know, NPL Advanced Media, NPL AM is kind of what we, okay. what we use. But um, it's, this is literally the same exact play that Major League Baseball did in the early 2000s. Um, they spun up a company called Major League Baseball Advanced Media, MLB AM. Right. Um, MLB AM um, was spun out to BAM Tech um, a couple years ago, oh, okay. and I actually had interviewed there in New York City. Right. Um, BAM Tech is the largest media company you've never heard of. Yep, um, it's, Never heard of them. Yep. It's They're larger than MLB itself. Wow. So in the early 2000s, um, baseball realized that, hey, we have this sport. Everyone loves it. We have this thing called the Internet and we need to figure it out. Um, So they spun up this tech company. Um, Every single baseball team paid in a million dollars each every year for four years. It was so successful that um, they only they only brought on the million dollars for two years because they had become profitable. Okay. Uh, so they did uh, 
they did streaming, um, streaming video on okay. the internet. Um, they did all the websites, they did all the stats. And a couple years later, that company started to expand. Um, right. So now, BAMTech currently does the streaming video for MLB, NHL, uh, League of Legends, HBO Go, um, PGA nice. Tour, and a whole bunch of other wow. other stuff. Like I went, I was in their control room in New York, and like you have all these sports that are going through their streaming thing, plus all the HBO Go content, which is seriously. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, wow. all their. Their live streams are, are going internally, so you walk into their control room and you see all the sports and um, like all the HBO over the top. Like it's it, it's wild. Wow. Like Game of Thrones is also kind of is also playing with all these sports, and you're like, oh wow, that's wow. not what I expected. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. That's so we basically saw what other sports were doing, and it's like, okay, well, paintball is not in a great way. When it comes to mm-hmm. to media, yep. um, okay. I mean, look up, uh, try and try and look up the roster uh, for say aftershock at World Cup. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, um, it's a professional sport, but we can't even look up the rosters. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> yeah, we're trying to fix all these small problems, um, and yeah, we come from a tech that's... media background. So that's what we're good at. Is there, in terms of priorities, Mm -hmm. what's the first thing you fix, in your opinion? Or what was the first thing you fixed, retrospectively? Um, Outside the NPL itself, the first thing was a streaming portal, um, stream PP. Okay. Because it was important for us to have an experience that um, could cater to both a lean back and lean forward experience. Right. Um, okay. You know, so I that's like that Chromecast. Terminology. And... Yeah. yeah. So, so the lean back is the retrospective content that's out there. Mm. Now, um, what you know, the... what... yeah, the lean, lean back, is, uh, lean back versus lean, lean forward is mostly like, uh, how much user engagement are you going to have? Okay. Um, so like, Netflix is a lean back experience. Right. You turn it on, you're on a couch. Right. Um, gotcha. Our our catalog of uh, gotcha. old content that's lean back. Yeah. With sure. the chat integrated chat experience that we rolled out with Super Sevens, that's lean forward because people are interacting gotcha. when that cast is going. Gotcha. Is there is there a time where you push one over the other, or are they both pushed simultaneously? They're both kind of pushed simultaneously. Yeah. Um, is you it... know, tournaments, tournaments, people are engaging, sure. um, are engaging more, or if they don't want to chat, they can hide it and, you know, have, uh, have the video itself be, take up the full screen. And... Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the, the, the trick with media and paintball is to mm-hmm. turn it from that one day in the week that mm-hmm. paintball is let's say consumed, participated in, however you wish to, you know, phrase it, there's a six day void for most people, Yes. which yeah. is huge. Sometimes there's a six month void. If you're just yeah. playing, you know, one event to the next and you don't train or you can't train or whatever people's individual circumstances are. Yeah. I think it's, um, it's a bit of a kind of an upside down approach that we've had for, for decades in that yeah. we've appealed to that 0.1% who compete, let alone yeah. the 0.001% who win. And well, it's, our, exactly. It's um, insane. You know, our, the media that we produce mm-hmm. and that we have produced, because um, every single webcast has always been the course of a weekend. Yes. That yeah. is an unconsumable product. Correct. It far exceeds it far exceeds the average binge time for uh, Netflix for Hulu. You know, yeah. we have something that people simply cannot consume. Like thirty hours over the course of I was exhausted oh, after I bet. clipping from Super Sevens, and you know I've watched NXL. Yeah. 
to take notes and to try and see like how much high level stats can we gather from the webcast. It's a normal human can't do it. I bet you learned some fantastic Australian slang though. I did. I, I did. bet you did. My, my favorite word could not be said <laughs> because uh, it's not normalized in the world. <laughs> I love how they just, everything can be turned into a slang word in Australian. Oh, yeah. So oh, it's not a webcast, it's a webo. Of course it is. So, yeah, I love it. So, and Macca, everybody's called Macca. So. Yeah, it's, it's a... I, I, I can't wait to go one day. It's great. It's a, it is a crazy experience. It is a crazy experience. I actually really enjoyed that they added a D-side camera as well. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, and one of, the, one of the things that's great about those guys is they don't just sit and rest on their laurels. I mean, I think, I think Super 7s, the Masters last year had almost a million views, I believe, over the course of the the event um, yeah they put out some numbers they put um, out some big numbers and now you know most people would have just gone you know what we're pretty happy with a million let's just keep this going and it's a it's still a significant effort to keep it going you yeah. know they have camera operators drone guys everything right mm -hmm. plus editing bandwidth etc but they didn't yeah. they just went you know how can we make this better how can we yeah get they make it better every event every event yeah, every yeah. event. So, yeah, um, I, I love the passion. Absolutely yeah. love the passion. And the D-side camera has been a point of contention for the past couple of years. Um, yeah, I mean, mainly with D-side players, right? Which is natural. Yeah, so, yeah you know, you have people like uh, yeah. you have people like Archie yeah. or, uh, who have been asking for a D-side camera because that's where yeah, I mean, most of his stuff is done. Prove, uh, prove you're good, Archie. Get in the snake. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, you know, and they the reason why they don't have a D side camera right now is something called the uh, 180 rule, okay. which comes from the film world. Okay, uh, and it's used kind of as an excuse. Um, it's something that exists basically, basically a narrative film. You want to keep something on a 180 plane so the right. camera can move on this side and the viewer won't get confused. Right. Um, cause if you cut, if you cut across, if you try to like, it. yeah, sure. You cut across that line. Um, I mean, all of a sudden the viewer is like, where am I? We're easily confused. Yeah. yeah. Now there are ways around that. Um, you need to kind of guide, uh, guide the viewer through that transition. Um, yeah. But like rules, especially in creative, in the creative world, yes. are meant to be broken. You need to understand them. Yes. Um, I come from a film production background. I went right. to school for cinema, cinema production. Um, I worked in LA for a while as an assistant director and right. then I transitioned into um, interactive marketing. But um, you I mean, know, you need you to say, understand. If, if you okay. explain them so that the viewer can digest the, the transitions. Yeah. Then you just look for a hard cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, and we, we, the NXL webcast doesn't believe in D side cameras because of the 180 rule. I think they're going to try this year. Um, okay. And I, mean, I hope I kind of, I get the logic behind them not doing it. Um, I like that somebody has done it because it now gives viewers a comparison yeah, you know? and, and they can say, you know what, I actually get that and I appreciate the added value or I don't like that. And there's nothing wrong with either opinion. So yeah. will we get to the stage where you can choose show me the D side camera or will, will that is that just way out there? Like, will um, it be red button technology where you can pick your camera to watch? So that is mostly a, I mean, we're, we're in a world now where uh, film is going more and more interactive. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Netflix just had their, uh, their interactive storytelling film Bandersnatch. Right. Um, you know, that technology is there. Right. Um, it's really a question of cost. 
you know, because uh, now instead of having one streaming the show live, yes. uh, you are streaming, streaming multiple Ultra cameras shows. live. Yeah, which I'd is more more bandwidth, um, uh, more money on the tech side. Um, so sign up, people. We need this money so that we can do this. So that I can push my red button. We need to hire more. I need to hire me, more engineers. Show me, show me D side. Show me Archie's barrel camera. Show me Ref Cam Twenty One. So that would be insane. Yeah, That's you know, future. and for for us, the NPL show, um, you know, because you asked about priorities earlier. Yeah, and, yeah. You now, the NPL, since we announced, there's been a lot of changes. Right. Uh, an incredible amount of changes. Um, now, that's a good thing, in my opinion, because oh, it shows absolutely. that you're dynamic and that you're staying current, and that most importantly, you're actually listening. Yeah. So, you know, the big takeaway for, for me is, whatever the changes are, it's showing that you're taking on board feedback, which is a positive. So, yeah. explain what's going on with the MPL at the moment then. Sure. Um, yeah, so one of the big changes that we've made, um, over since we announced right. um, this this year is well this season in particular is a difficult season I think in the paintball world um, you know you're having budgets from some of these teams contract right um, the industry is still growing right you know don't get me wrong but the industry is far larger than tournament paintball um, far so like larger yes exactly yes so, so I think. You know, we're starting to get into this point where there's some pushback from the tournament okay. side. Um, you know, because we're kind of into year ten, or okay, actually more than that. Yeah, of this uh, stagnation. Yeah, um, I would you agree know. with that. I mean, yeah, uh, I would agree with that. It would probably, you know, two thousand and four, two thousand and five, to me, felt like the heyday. Where things yeah. were booming, and then since then it's it's tailed off. Yeah. So, and you know that's having some real world effects. Yes. Uh, yes, most definitely. You know, I think last year, uh, you started seeing more and more people starting to leave at their prime. Um, this season is no different. Um, and I think that player, I think players leaving will only accelerate um, okay. in the future if something doesn't change. Um, and don't, this is not me saying that the NXL is doing everything wrong because they're not. No, um, I mean, this is, this is high end tournament yeah. players across the board. I mean, we yeah. see the same in Europe, you know, yeah. the teams that have competed in the international circuit for the past decade. And now, you know, saying, actually we're doing this instead, yeah. or, you know, we're not doing anything. We're, we're done. So yeah. Um, and I think that's because of a contraction in the market, contraction in some spending. Um, you know, players, as they get older, um, you know, paintball hurts. <laughs> it really does. It's you no, versus the ground. No joke. Yeah, they're hard. So they're hard, especially when it's a kid who doesn't seem to feel it. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's fascinating because I kind of view, I view tournament paintball completely differently now than I have for the past 20 years, if I'm honest. For the past 20 years, it's always been, you know, the best possible thing to aspire to. Mm -hmm. And I'd make every effort to get to the top and stay at the top. Um, and this year, I feel there's a huge, you know, kind of light bulb moment of clarity more than anything in yeah. that. I view tournament paintball like Formula One racing. Yeah. And I view the vast majority of other people who partake in paintball as normal everyday drivers. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what car they use, doesn't matter what fuel they use, doesn't matter what what mm -hmm. road they drive on or what side of the road they drive on. They are not going to be Formula One drivers ever. Yeah. You know, and this is this to me is, you know, how how I am now trying to treat paintball in that, you know, they all deserve respect. I don't want to crash into any of them. You know? oh, yeah. And if I can help them be better drivers, 
I'd love to help them be better drivers or get more enjoyment out of driving, yep. you know, and it's, uh, it still, you know, humbles me that it's taken me 29 years to try MagFed, which I tried last month and had the time of my life. That's probably the yeah. biggest, one of the biggest adrenaline rushes I've had playing paintball. I'm and, sure. And the important thing is it was playing paintball. So, you know, the, not what type. The most fun I've ever had playing paintball was a scenario game. Yeah, I kind of, I have a double-edged sword with scenario games. So they are, you know, I get why people enjoy them. I've struggled to enjoy them for a long time, but I feel mm. like I'm breaking the back of that because you have to go in with a different mentality. Yeah. So really different ours, mentality. Ours was a local like big game. Um, there was a couple hundred people and uh, it was, uh, it was a, a rock war kind of themed thing. Nice. Cause that was the time when uh, that was the early 2000s. So nice. that's before we found out about <laughs> Nice. I mean, I guess, but it was it was a, it was a blast because it just went on for all. It was all day, you know. Yeah. People were having a fun time doing missions, and it yeah, was I, it was just fun. That's great. I mean, the big, and, the big thing is how do we kind of get out there to this whole paintball playing community? That hey, this is what tournament paintball is. For example, yeah. you know, and you don't have to do it. But no. if you want to find out more about it, this is what it actually is. These are some yeah. of the entities within it in terms of teams, players, etc. Um, you know, I don't know every Formula One driver out there, but I know of the big teams. I also know that, you know, the big teams have links to the common car, you know, yeah. in that Mercedes make an engine, Renault make an engine, etc. Right. And... I can buy a Mercedes or a Renault. I can't buy a yeah. Formula One car and I don't want to buy a Formula One car. So, yeah, there needs to be some some progress in those areas, I feel. Yeah. Um, and it's education. Yeah, yeah. and, um, you know, there's a lot of good that's happening in the paintball world right yes, now. Yes, there is. Because we need, what what this industry needs is a pipeline from the first time recreational player through like, yes, you can make it a career if you want to. Yes. Um, and I think the problem that this, A, you can't really make it a career. A couple people have because they work incredibly hard. Correct. Um, you know, they're Correct. traveling worldwide. They're doing clinics all the time. Yeah. Um, and a Correct. couple teams do get small salaries. Yes. Um, yeah. But that's not all teams. They um, cannot retire on those salaries, just no. to be clear. It's not like, you know, it's not like you're an athlete in any other high profile sport. No. So, and yeah. you know, it's not even, um, and especially the past, I would say, month and a half, um, things have gotten a little heated on the internet. Um, and we watch all of, all of those discussions. Um, and, you know, we've been told to be, we've been told by people who are, high up in this sport yeah um to like if you don't like it leave which is not what we should be saying um they which actually worries me a lot they don't know you got links with the ice cream parlor from back in the day so you should stay we need more we need more people who are willing to actually do oh not 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 me but like people yeah, no, telling the, other the divisional entity. players like yeah 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 if you don't if you don't like the way it's being run sure take off the, it's better for the sport if you're not in it. I'm like, guys, what are you doing? Yeah. We're small as is. We're really small. That's the that's actually the scary thing, right? And you we know, are and really small. It, terrifyingly so. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, yes, people throw out big numbers of, like, millions and millions of people play worldwide. The actively engaged cohort is probably thirty to 40,000. Right. Right. I mean, that's like... If you put them all in a stadium, it would make yeah. some noise. But if you put them in a, you know, a big stadium, it doesn't fill it. No. It's, you know, is so it's crazy. yeah, we can't we can't take this hard line like if you don't no. like it, get out. You need to listen to people yeah. and you need to understand that you are representatives of 
this sport. Yes. Um, you know, and we're being told like, oh, no, you have to be realistic. Like you can't, we'll never be on TV again. We'll never get salaries, be realistic with paintball as it is today. I'm like, complacency is the enemy of progress. Okay. Um, I would agree. Because, listen, yes, you can be realistic all day, but if you don't strive to do better, you will never get to that point. Um, I think, I don't recall a time where there were so many different entities pushing forward as there are currently. Yeah, I mean, a lot. there's a lot of people who have not given up the fight. Yeah, I mean, for example, you know, aside from the MPL, Stream PB... You do have, you know, the Super 7 guys, oh, yeah. the Legends Leagues. You've got, you know, Greg Hastings, people Iron City Classic. Canada, Iron City Classic. Yeah, the whole, you know, the whole classic movement yeah. is getting people back. Yeah, And, it is. you know, and to a certain extent, it has to just go, you know what? We're not fussed if the current population don't want to do it. If we're getting people back, that's serving, you know, yeah. just as important a purpose well and the icc um is doing an incredibly important thing yeah. um because we're helping to ease that transition from uh the woods to the tournament field yeah you know we're building that pipeline of every single step up yeah and i think a problem the sport has had for a while is that they try and make the tournament format look closer to what people play on a recreational level. Right. Um, right. Which I think is a, personally, I think is a mistake because then you water down the product and then you make something that no one likes. Right. You make something that the recreational players don't want to do. And you make something that the high end athletes, because some of a lot of these guys, the, especially the ones who's who consider themselves high end athletes, they are, you know, these guys train every day. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I mean, I think it'd be I think it'd be a fascinating survey if you could actually, you know, speak to every player who does tournament paintball and get them to grade every event they played in 2018 in terms of fun. And I bet the score would be quite low. Yeah. Oh, it for sure is. You know, um, um, other than the ones that win. I bet winning's really fun. So, oh, yeah. But, you know... But very, could, very few people win. Hardly anyone. And sometimes the same guys win. That's the crazy thing. So you're not spreading that fun. So I think one of the things that the ICC does really well is they embrace this is fun. You know, this is, this is gritty. People are going to go at it. People are going to get overshot, you know, potentially... But it's going to be train crash paintball like it yeah. used to be. Why do you think they sold out in like 16 minutes? It's crazy. It was, it was crazy. So I think we got lucky in that we're the only European team coming over for it. Wow. So, yeah. 71 other teams trying to fight us. We're ready. So it's going to be, it's going to be really good though. But I mean, for us, being perfectly honest, it's not a cheap trip. It's a bucket list experience. To yeah. play against the guys we played against 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's that's what it's all about. So Because I I know like with the NXL NXL right now, I've talked to a fair number of pros who, you know, they're not having fun out there anymore. You know, you can, they're drilling these layouts, tell. they're 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 they have the bounce shots dialed in, you know, doing the same thing point after point after point. Yeah. And you know, because the layouts are coming out two weeks early, all the crazy moves that we're used to, well, I shouldn't say we're used to, but like if you look up the old MPPL show oh, yeah. or the old WGN Rage in the Cage show, yeah. um, you know, because some of those clips, because uh, Carl Markowski is actually um, one of our co-founders. Yeah. And like I found a clip of um, Excessive from back in the day of like, people pulling off crazy moves oh. down the center every single time. And it yeah. was Carl. <laughs> yeah, it, exactly. Was, I'm like, bro, I haven't seen you do anything like this since your, until your second to the last point at world cup where he. Yeah. I, and I hope you said to him, you used to be really fast. 
So he still is really no, fast. He's not. No, <laughs> but he's, he's not as fast. I don't think he's as fast as he used to be. He's, he's, he's not. I could. Uh, uh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know, mean, he those he, moves still yeah. happen, but they happen in practice. Yeah, it's it, you're absolutely right because you know I remember those. I remember those matches, and many of them I probably commentated on for the MPPL, and it was a case of you would see a player break to the other team's forty off the break you know and it wasn't a case of if the other team the other team didn't know they were going to do it because the guy who was doing it had only just thought about doing it it yeah. was you know it wasn't like premeditated oh when we get to sunday i'm gonna do this it mm -hmm. was just that emotion and riding that wave of i reckon this is on i'm just gonna do it yeah you know roll the dice and let's go so wow yeah. Yeah. You know, I think I think over the course of trying to make this universal format around the world, um, we kind of over overcorrected in a way. You know, we've uh, taken a bit of the fun out of the sport. Taken, um, taken a lot of the fun yeah. out of the sport. I mean, this really has to I, I don't think there's any harm in being brutally honest. Tournament paintball for me lost its magic a long time ago in the sense of it was do a job and repeat mm -hmm. sometimes you got to do two jobs but that was only if you did the first job well yeah. and that just became so mundane um and you know i think it became mundane because i was privileged enough to experience what came before it so yeah. one of the issues is that the people who play nowadays if they haven't experienced that Mm -hmm. They don't know it's mundane. It's just the norm. Yeah. And it's, as you rightly state, it's accepted and, you know, it's restrictive. Um, and it's, sometimes it's just about educating people, hey, you could do this. You yeah. could, you know, this is a well, possibility. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was part of the reason that I, like when I got back into divisional play again, um, because I am not good at paintball. I just want to make you can, that. You can, be, you can be not good, but still uh, be effective. Uh, my survivability is not where it should be. I'll say I, that. I mean, <laughs> ultimately, oh. you only ever come first or second in a game of paintball. Yeah. No, I, I still enjoy it's it. I haven't problem. done field in a while. But, um, you know, when I got started playing divisionally again, uh, last time I played like going every weekend was yeah. in the early 2000s. And that was right when OGX ball kind of came on the scene. Right. And, you know, like I, when I was a kid, I needed to be in shape. Right. For that. Cause right. that was hard. And I, I only played regionally. Um, I mean, even regionally, but even that so, was hard. It was hard. Yeah. yeah. And it was chaos. Absolute chaos. And, like, you would do something different all the time. Yeah. And, like, then I got back into the sport. And I, because I'm uh, I'm a six foot two player, there was only, I, that was during the era of the wall. Right. So they're only, like, I play the wall. Right. That's what I play. Right. Unless, unless one of the kids on my team, and this happened a lot, didn't want me to go to the wall because he wanted to do it instead. So I ended up playing, like, the three, which is not what I enjoy you just playing. Gotta, you just got to shoot that kid. Just yeah. do it a few and times. And I would do the same thing every yeah. single point. I was like, I don't know. I'm wish, like, I'm, I'm, wish I don't have a I'll go to the to three. Throw, but yeah. I'm on a divisional level and I can't. This yeah. isn't fun. I had more fun playing one on ones with, uh, with my friend. Right. Right. You know? Wow. So, so backtrack a little bit. Yeah. MPL. Yes. What can you tell us? Uh, what does the future hold? As in 2019, what can we expect from the MPL? Significant change. Oh. Uh, so when we announced um, in December, we were planning a three, uh, three event series. Right. Uh, we are scaling that back. Okay. Um, and that is not, uh, and I know saying that will turn on a lot of, the internet trolls saying that we are the next uh, NPL reboot or what have you. Right. 
Um, but the reason we're doing so is because we've changed the way this company is structured. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, instead of having a three event series, um, you know, there's a lot of interest from a lot of teams. The problem is it costs a lot of money for teams to travel to events. Sure. You know, you're talking like ten to $15,000 to move sure. a team oh, to go to an event, not including, uh, not including entry. Yes. And paint. Yes. Uh, so what we want to do is get our camera test off and do an MPL one, um, and go from there. Right. So we've transitioned into a more UFC style, uh, setup. Okay. Um, where NPL events are no longer a season. We okay. hold events as needed where right. we need them. Um, so each each event is basically cast. Um, so, oh, you know, nice. we will have a core group of teams um, who stay with us, of course. Um, you know, we have a Denver franchise here that's um, okay. uh, made of uh, Blitz players, Trade My Gun, Boom. Right. Um, okay. And actually uh, owned by... Um, uh, uh, Denver Nuggets uh, assistant coach. Oh, nice. Uh, which is super exciting. Um, you know, Naughty Dogs are coming back. Um, they're going to be playing with us. Uh, we have a couple other teams who are coming in. Um, but cool. we're going to have a core group. But we're going to allow a little bit more flexibility in who can play when. Okay. Um, so teams can now kind of swap in and out. Um, let's say oh, we great. get to NPL 3. And yeah. um, you have a Houston Heat or uh, I mean, it's an impact that wants to throw down after okay. seeing how our show was put together. And they're like, we kind of want to be a part of this now. We'll let them in. Right. Uh, nice. We, and presumably so, that's an open door for any team of that caliber. Much. Yeah. Uh, pro, semi-pro. Cool. Um, so, so we're from Europe, to be from Australia, from wherever. Oh, yeah. If somebody wants to come across the pond, we'll let them. Yeah. See how they throw down. Get paddling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an interesting storytelling technique as well. Yes. Uh, Yes, it is. You know, because there's a lot of teams with a lot of talent out there. Um, And the problem with our pro division is because it's locked, only one team gets relegated out. So a lot of semi-pro talent gets stacked. Right. But... You know, some of those semi-pro teams, it will take them years to bump up to the pro division. Correct. We yeah. can see how somebody throws down. That's fine. Nice. Um, yeah. And part of, and the reason why we're doing that change, um, and when I said we've kind of changed the way that our company is structured, um, we are embarking on a um, institutional round of investment from traditional venture capitalists. Okay. Um, uh, initially, we were trying to keep the NPL um, as a privately funded company, right. uh, and you know, bootstrap it, um, run profitably, efficiently, and scale as we can. Right. Um, we need a little bit more help. I right. think okay. you know, we're looking for strategic investors, people who work um, in the sports and technology space. Um, I still have my investor network from stars back in the day. There is investor interest or has been investor interest. Um, and we've decided that we're going to embark on a multi-million dollar series A round of financing. Um, nice. Yes. So nice. for Very us, cool. that kind of changes our direction. Absolutely. And um, that, you know, we're not, we're no longer just producing an event. Um, right. We're building a company that can help other leagues around the world yeah. execute their vision. Um, yeah, I mean, it's sustainability, right? Yeah. So, yeah. fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, so it's an exciting, it's an exciting change. Um, but it does, it does mean changes to the NPL season. Um, yeah, I guess there's, there's that short-term sacrifice of this is what we'd hoped we could do. But actually, we've we've revised that because we have different aspirations, you know, better aspirations. Um, so in order to achieve those, we have to do it this way. So, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I'm I'm in full agreement that that's that's not a bad thing. That it's yeah. just, uh, you know, wait a bit so that yeah. things can get better faster. Um, yeah. 
you know, so that means like we're pushing hard on the technology side um, right. because we need product and we need sure. users um because when you get into a venture capital route the only metric that matters well you, you choose a metric whatever sure. one whether it's revenue users whatever you need to be up until the right week over week um so sure. that means um you know like stream pb is no longer just a cool thing to have no now it's in, now it's critically important yeah. to get people subscribing. Um, okay. And so, no, I was just going to ask. So the average viewer who yeah. plays paintball at whatever level in whatever variant, um, what what is their call to action at this point? Um, so you know, with with our stream PV product. Um, we're kind of trying to encompass a lot of stuff under that umbrella. Right. Um, so we do have, we are working on getting a uh, fantasy pick them out for, um, for the NXL right. and we will have prizes that we give away. Um, so, you know, if you have a stream PB membership, you know, you'll get into our um, premium tier for the uh, oh. fantasy pick them for free. Oh, um, I'm ready. I'm ready. So, I can't wait. Yeah, you know, uh, we are granted. We do already have fantasy pick them out there. Um, I think the product can be better. So can we? Um, so with like the fantasy pick them, can yeah. you? Could you do a this is who Carl picked type of thing? This oh yeah, is absolutely. who Nikki T picked because I don't mind. You can. I'll pick my fantasy team. Oh yeah, and well, I'll throw it down to anyone out there to go up against it. So the interesting part now. Um, the reason why chat took such a long time to get up is because we needed to switch databases. Right. Um, you know, the database we were using internally, uh, we can make an update once every one to five updates every second, which oh, wow. is not ideal for chat. Right. Okay. Uh, so now we can handle real time chat, right? which figuring out that database means we can now roll out polling products. Um, oh, cool. oh, very so, cool. In theory, if you're watching um, one of our streams or if you're watching an augmented stream like um, the NXL events, because sure. again, we don't have an official partnership there, um, but we will be running our product. Sure. Um, okay. So, you know, we can ask people in real time, who do you think is going to win Iron Man versus Aftershock? Or, well, Aftershock got, Aftershock was my guys because I stayed right. with them, but they got relegated. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I need to Iron, a new team. Iron Man. <laughs> Woo! First one Iron Man versus uh, Impact. Yeah, let's say, and we can ask people that and get the feedback in real time. And you um, can do a who is going to get shot first. Oh, we can we can ask anything once oh. we have that figured out. Uh, it's awesome. just a matter of building it. Um, I love it. Yeah, I love it. So you now, know, where can people where can people go to check out um, StreamPB? StreamPB.com. Easy as that. Uh, yeah, as easy as that. Easy as that. So, um, and I'm going to make Joe work really hard and just go, you know, here's the link like that, and he'll just yeah. add that magically. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, we have we're adding more content as we work with rights holders. Um, okay. Unfortunately, we've kind of um, some of the stuff from uh, yesteryear um, requires more clearances um, than okay. we'd like. Uh, so some of that stuff will take a while. Right. Um, but the good news is the more subscribers we get, the more money we get, we can hire an entertainment attorney and we can hire people to work in music clearance. Oh, uh, cool. So, you know, we have a lot of people who have said, oh, I'm not going to like, um, we've, we had a ton of people use the site. Right. Um, the thing is, you know, we need to get those memberships so we can do sure. more stuff and acquire more content and stream more leagues um, and eventually, you know, pay these leagues money. Right. Um, right. For the um, content. Yeah. Cause sure. if it's uh, for content creators, you know, if it's behind our paywall, we're paying content creators out at uh, six cents an hour, which is in line with Amazon prime tier one streaming. Okay. Um, so, you know, you're getting the same deal. Uh, if you're a content creator, That's as you cool. would if you were to distribute on Amazon Prime. Um, so, you know, if because a lot of people make stuff for free. Yeah, yeah. Also, and they do it for the views. Um, but that's not a sustainable model. 
for sure. content creators. So, you know, we want to be in a position where we can um, simulcast leagues, help them uh, with the clipping and uh, help them get a new audience as well as some of the um, other content creators to actually get more money in their pockets so they can do more of what you love. I um, like it. I like it a yeah. lot. I feel that I feel that this conversation really is just scratching the surface. Oh, yes. Can we can we do like a six month revisit on this? Absolutely. And be like, you know, what do we what do you achieve from yeah. where you are at today to you know six months in the future, twelve months in the future, whatever it is? Well, because like I said, with this new venture capital route you know, our company changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Substantially so. Yeah. Because now, now, uh, you know, we can't just put on an NPL event. Yeah. And call it a day. No, e you no, know. e exactly. Exactly. Just to close this sure. initial, um, interview, what's the one thing you're most excited about this year? Um, you know, I'm 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 extraordinarily excited about getting the uh, NPL camera test done. Okay, um, because that will be the first time that we test our format right. and test our media show. So that's um, the sink or swim moment to a certain extent, yeah. is it? Yeah, you know, we've talked to our our media team. Is we've been we've been studying paintball for the past. I mean, I, I played it, but my media guy, he's been sure. studying it for the past year. Right. Um, you know, we're going to try a lot of new stuff. Cool. Uh, I don't think we're going to have a single lockdown camera. Nice. For the camera test. So that means the, the angles that you're used to at the 50 and the 220s. Nice. Those cameras are not going to be there. Cool. Um, I think we're going to be all mobile. Okay. Um, so our camera team can shift around the field based on where people are and okay. how the play is kind of evolving. Yep. Um, and, you know, we are testing a couple different format changes. Um, okay. You know, we have that OG X ball feel, but we still, we're still working on scoring. Um, okay. Whether we're going to have a shot clock or if we're going to have a center flag option um, where it's, um, points for both the pole and the hang. Right. Um, this just kind of incentivize something that happened in the center. Cool. Uh, we are also testing four man um, instead of five man or three man. Nice. Uh, so that's being tested as well. So, you know, that's going to be a big moment for us. Okay. But right now, you know, streaming PB is already a bigger product than we ever thought it would be. And this know? is, you know, mid February. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're we're already working with leagues around the world, and more are coming online. Um, yeah, and that's very very exciting for us. Yeah, um, you've already learned new words from Australia, and goodness oh, knows what you're going to learn from Colombia this coming weekend. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of really good webcasts. Yeah. that are oh, done worldwide. Tons. Um, the problem is, a lot of those casts just stream to the ether. They go yeah. out to YouTube, and uh, yeah, you need to find them. Yep. So we're kind of consolidating that presence into the stream PB products. And as we get our viewership up and as we get our, um, our streams delivered up, you know, we can get uh, an actual ad server so we can um, augment the paintball ad inventory. But, oh, you know, in order for us to do any of that stuff, we need viewers and we it's need subscribers true. and we need users. Sure. So streampb.com, uh, presumably stream stream pb on facebook and instagram as well uh i believe on on instagram on social i think it's stream paintball right okay it's stream paintball and then it's stream we will, PB. we will find all of the relevant links and make sure that they're on the screen so well, but uh you know we have more product coming out so I love it. stay tuned and we should be testing some stuff out for uh nxl nxl vegas fan well, Matt, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate how busy you are. And thank you for making yeah. time for us today. Thanks for doing the interview. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure.